Hey, welcome back to Gold Scratch. So this video is about air filters. How big of an air filter you need? How much air does your engine need to make power? Uh, is your little one inch filter limiting your power? All that kind of stuff. So um, just to get started, you know, since I started drag racing and building engines back in the 60s, a lot of things have changed. Uh, but a lot of things have stayed the same. So uh, I'm going to try and cover that. And it's kind of, uh, you know, the theme of myth bust, myth busting. And because there's a lot of misconceptions about, uh, about airflow and how much you need. So I'm going to give you a little uh, history to kind of uh, put that into perspective. So uh, in the early days of drag racing, uh, we drove the car to the track didn't have a closed-in trailer and all that stuff. We put one slick in the back seat and one in the trunk because they wouldn't both fit in the trunk. And the way to the track, uh, we would buy a bunch of ice, of a few bags of ice for a cool can because we believe that cold fuel makes more power than hot fuel. And it actually does, although not very much for what it's worth. And when we got to the track, we'd jack up the car, put the slicks on, drop the exhaust system, we take all the mufflers and stuff out, uh, fill the cool can with ice. And the last thing we would do is take the air filter, uh, take the breather off, either take the air filter out completely or turn the, th the top upside down because it exposed more air. And it really made it sound cool, but uh, we thought it also made more power. So what we've learned over the years is uh, probably we've been better off to leave the breather alone. And that's kind of the theme of this uh, video. Uh, how much air do you really need? So I tried to get that, uh, put it in perspective. I did my own calculations. And so I started off saying, you know, all the air that gets into your engine has to go through, if you have a four barrel carburetor, through these holes. So I calculated the area of the holes. And all the air that passes through here has to pass through the venturi of your carburetor. So uh, a four barrel has four venturi. This is just a one barrel carburetor. So a venturi is just a restriction, basically. It goes into a smaller diameter. And the whole fundamental principle of a carburetor is based on the same principle of what it takes to fly an airplane. And that's Bernoulli's principle, which says that Air traveling at a high rate of speed exerts less pressure, less lateral pressure than air at rest. So here's a, here's a, a, a picture of a Venturi uh, and showing that when all the air is traveling towards the restriction, it all has to get through. So it has to do two things. It has to speed up to get there. And when it does that, it actually causes a restriction which lowers the pressure. So you can see that the air pressure, this is a manometer here, the air pressure on this side of the venturi is higher than the air pressure uh, in, the, in the orifice. So that's what basically happens. And why do they have to do that? In order to get draw fuel from the fuel bowl, this is a just simple one barrel carburetor. There's your booster. So that negative pressure that's being created in the venturi is drawing or sucking fluid or fuel out of your float bowl. A float bowl is nothing more than a fuel reservoir, okay? Place to store fuel when it's needed. So there's your little jet and it flows up and the venturi, the booster uh, does just that. It boosts the effect of the venturi and draws fuel and atomizes it as well. There's an air bleed in there as well. It atomizes it. So that is the minimum restriction or the minimum orifice that the air has to travel through. So I calculated uh, how big of a filter you need. So there's a three inch filter out of my Camaro. Looks like it's getting a little bit dirty. Maybe I should be changing it. Uh, so I did a quick calculation. The area of a one inch filter is four times as much as the area of these four barrels. So I thought, well, you know what that means is that you only need a one inch filter. Well, I did a little more homework and you know, I learned from YouTube too. I learned from reading 
And I'll save you the trouble of doing it. I'll put it all together in a way that I hope it makes sense. A little bit of credit has to go to this guy here, David Vizard. I looked at his theory of airflow through filters. Uh, lots of stuff in there. This is a great book, by the way, if anybody doesn't have it. Uh, if you want to learn about small box chefs, that's the book to buy. But the information that he provides, some of it is influenced by uh, KNN. So I, I kind of took that information and try to produce what I think is an outcome of it. So uh, what I was able to uh, determine was based on that, I think a KNN filters, uh, according to David Weiser information, uh, can flow, make about six or seven horsepower per square inch of filter. So I calculated the number of square inches in the filter, okay? And then I cut that number back for a standard filter to about five horsepower per square inch. So a one inch filter, okay, has 44 square inches of area. You just take simple math. Uh, pi times the diameter times the thickness is 44 square inches times five horsepower per square inch. So a one inch filter can support 220 horsepower based on that information. A uh, two inch filter then is 88 square inches, can support 440. And a three inch filter is 132 square inches, can support 660. So, and you can keep going down the line, but for a streetcar, I think 660's got it covered. So, so my three inch filter on my Camaro is not holding me back because it makes about 450 horsepower. And so the filter is not a problem. Um, I also watch some other videos. I watch videos too. And I apologize to the guys. Some young guys made some videos. They have a flow bench and they measured the restriction of a whole bunch of uh, filters, uh, including KNN, playing in with the KNN top, all that stuff. Really good information. But I'm going to deduct from that what it came down to was. Worst case scenario, a filter will reduce the CFM of an engine uh, flow through a carburetor by about 10%. So they had a carburetor that had about 600 CFM of flow. And the worst filter was, uh, worst loss was 60 uh, CFM. The best case scenario was just a nice base without anything, by the way. But uh, the numbers were all most 5 to 10% of airflow loss. So if you go back to, you know, when we dyno my son's engine, we made over 500 horsepower with less than 700 CFM of air. So uh, we would not have a problem. It's certainly a, a three inch air filter uh, would not restrict that engine because it can support 660 horsepower and we're only making 500. So uh, that makes sense. So. What about ram air and cowl induction? Is that all just uh, you know, a marketing deal or not? Well, not really, because one of the things that ram air does and cowl induction does, it brings air from outside the engine bay into the carburetor. Uh, the same philosophy, our super stock car, all pretty much all circle track cars draw air from under the, inch, under the windshield, uh, the back of the, back of the hood, which is a high pressure area. Uh, does it give more air? Well, it takes as much air as it needs, but that air is going to be a lot cooler and fresher than the air that's under the engine bay because it's pretty warm in there and the outside air is definitely going to be better. Uh, and the cooler the air is, the more energy there is in it. As that air travels through the intake manifold, it expands and when it gets into the engine, it actually increases compression and makes more power. So, so ram air is a good thing to have, uh, getting air from outside the car. Most race cars find air somehow from outside the car. In the old stock car days, they use the headlight openings and stuff like that. So there's various ways to do that. So getting cool air there is good. How much do you need? Uh, if you have, uh, you know, one of the things this might be interesting to guys with uh, and I've run into this, I've built some engines for guys with Corvettes and stuff like that. Uh, Corvettes typically, because they're a pretty low car, have 
hood restrictions. So how much filter do you need? So for the average street car, uh, street engine that's making, you know, 400 horsepower, a two inch filter would be enough. So if that's your issue, don't worry about it too much. The bigger, the better is better. That's for sure. But once again, about 10% loss in volume through the filter and about five horsepower per square inch of filter is a good rule of thumb. And that get, gets you going and maybe takes concerns away as I do have questions from time to time, you know, have hood clearance issues. Uh, hopefully this information will help you kind of make sense of that. So this is not everything there is to know about airflow or breathers. It's a 10 minute video and you're not going to become an expert from a 10 minute video. There's lots more to know. You need to do your homework, but, uh, we're trying to provoke thought and interest by our videos. And one of the things I'm going to try and do, uh, when we dyno this engine, uh, I haven't got a dyno date yet. That's the uh, budget build. 350 that we have on some test then now when we dyno it uh we're gonna we already said we're gonna do some carburetor tests we're gonna got multiple different carburetors but i'm gonna try putting breathers on them and see what difference that makes and uh if you remember back in the 60s the way engines came they had a big black breather with a snorkel coming out the hole at the end was only about that big and those engines were dynoed with those breathers on. They were dynoed the way they were installed in the car. How did all that air get through that little orifice? So uh, we're gonna try and find one. I don't have one right now. I don't know where one is, but we're gonna try and find one if we can on the dyno and install it uh, after we do our carburetor test and see how much difference it makes. We'll just take a regular three inch breather, uh, probably one off my Camaro, put that on and see how much difference it makes. So. You know, all this theory is great, but in the end, the dyno never lies. Hope you found that interesting. Credits, please like and subscribe. <laughs> As usual, uh, you heard all my, my pleas and speeches before. Every YouTuber needs subscribers, and subscribers what makes, worth, makes it worth making videos. So we'll keep digging if you keep subscribing. Thank you very much. So credits to the Vizard. Uh, Young guys, I'm going to try and find that video and put a credit to them in the, in the information. Uh, the guys that did the flow test uh, using breathers, a couple of young guys, and they're pretty smart. And I appreciate the input and I learned from them, even though uh, I've been drag racing well before they were born. But thank you very much for the information. And thank you for watching Gold's Garage.